So, one of my favourite type of devices is a small factor PC, just like this one from Ataman, the X7 Ti made by Mini's Forum. But with a powerful 14th gen Intel Ultra 9 inside of it and many other features, how well does this compare to say the likes of say a Mac Mini? And as you can see here, the Ataman is quite unique. And obviously you might have noticed the screen on the front of it. And this is one of its best selling features. And there's lots of other bits and pieces to talk about too, what I'm going to talk about today. But this machine here, with a one terabyte hard drive inside of it, an NVMe, and also 32 gigabytes of RAM, only costs 849 US dollars. And I'm going to be comparing it to the likes of the M2 and M2 Pro Mac Mini in how much speed it is and how much faster it is or how much slower it is but first of all let's have a look at the unboxing of this Ataman first of all. So the unboxing was very very easy as you can see here it just slid out opened up and then obviously on the inside we actually had the Ataman inside of it and then obviously just below that we had cables and everything HDMI cables the small power brick I would actually say here was 120 watts and everything and obviously my UK power plug and then obviously the actual unpackaging of the actual Ataman was quite simple and everything like that. But you probably want to know what the full on specs are of this Ataman. Well, let me go over them right away now. So what we have running on the inside here is an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. So this is a 16 core, 22 threads. And so this is comprised of say about six performance cores, eight energy efficiency cores and then obviously there's also those two LPE cores too. There's also Intel AI Boost NPU built into this and obviously the GPU is an iGPU but it's an Intel Arc one and there's actually 32 gigabytes of RAM inside of this but this can be upgraded to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM at 5600 megahertz. There's also like I said one terabyte M2 PCIe 4.0 inside of here but you can actually put two Two actual cards inside of it, so two hard drives. There's also Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 and as you can see right here it's running on Windows 11. But next of all let's talk about the ports on this machine because you actually get quite a few. So starting out on the rear here you actually get a USB 3.2 port, a USB 2.0 port, HDMI and you also get a display import. There's also two 5G LAN Ethernet ports, a USB 4 USB-C port and then you also get an Oculink port too. And just in case you want to know what that means, it means if you've got an eGPU, you can connect this up to this machine. You can connect up a dedicated graphics card to this, an NVIDIA, AMD, or even one of the new Intel Arc dedicated cards, and you can actually use that by that Oculink, which is absolutely amazing. But let's have a look then at what's on the top then of this machine. So what you have here is a full-size SD card slot, and also the power button, and also a shutter for the webcam, which we'll talk about in a moment. But then moving on to the other side, we have two USB 3.2 ports, a headphone 3.5 jack, USB 4 again, USB-C port 2, and of course a reset button. And you can get all of this with the 32 gigabytes of RAM inside of this, like I said, that one terabyte NVMe for 849 US dollars. So that is way cheaper than an M2 Pro Mac Mini, what we have right here. And just in case you wanted to know what the actual size sort of difference is here, you can see here actually that the new Ataman here obviously is smaller, but it does have that power brick too, what I did talk about. But then obviously the actual thickness is slightly thicker, but overall I'd say the footprint's probably around about the same for both of these machines. But next of all, we actually have the party tricks about the actual Ataman. And you can see right now it's standing on its side at the moment because you actually get a stand with this. As you saw what was in with the unboxing here. So that's really, really cool that you can actually stand it up. And the main reason why you want to probably stand it up is because you actually want to play around with the screen here. And also that we've got a webcam at the top here actually built into this mini PC, which is really, really unique. I've never seen anything like it. And it's pretty cool. Let me show you what this this actual screen can do. So as you can see here on the front we have like the time, the date, we also have the CPU, the usage, the GPU usage and things like this, the amount of RAM that's being used and also our hard drive inside of it too. 
But what we can also do is do mode adjustment. And as you can see here, we're in performance mode. But what we can do is we can bring this down to a balance mode if we wanted to do that, or even energy saving mode. And obviously this will lower the amount of power going in, also reduce the fan noise and things like that, what is pretty awesome. The great thing too, is that you can also change other things around. You can change like the brightness here on the screen. You can also change the volume output as well out of this machine, what's really, really awesome. And then like I said, we do have like the switch here on the top to hide away that webcam for Windows Hello and also for blocking out if we don't want people spying on us, what's really, really cool. There's also sensors here for Windows Hello too. But we can do other things as well. We can look at our device interfaces, see what ports we've got, what we just spoke about. And then there's even more extra functions here where we can actually just have the time being displayed if we wanted to do that, well, it's pretty awesome. And then obviously the other thing we can do, we can actually change the layout here. So obviously, look, I'm going to try out this layout here. Let's see what that one looks like. So there we go. It's a bit more of a different order now. And yeah, that seems okay, but I want to switch it again. Let's try a different one this time. Let's have a look here. Switch it to that one. Let's go back and have a look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty cool too, but to be deadly honest, I prefer the default one that it was on before, so I'm going to switch it back to that right now. So yeah, really, really like that too. The other thing though, what we can do is again, we can check to see what device interfaces that we actually have here. And then obviously the other thing we could do, we can actually change the language too on this front touchscreen. So I think this is pretty unique and pretty cool what we've got with this touchscreen. And also that webcam built in was a 1080p webcam. I absolutely love that. But you're probably wanting to know how fast and how powerful this machine is with the 32 gigabytes of RAM we have inside of it. And also that Intel Ultra 9 inside of here too. Let's see then, starting out with Geek Bench, then we'll go over to Cinebench and then obviously we'll check out some games too. But let's have a look at Geekbench here then. So I've just got it running and we're going to compare it to the M2 and the M2 Pro in the other Mac Minis. And let's see what we got here. So at the top here, we have the 8 core M2 Mac Mini. Single core performance is 2,653, giving us a multi core performance of 9,575 with that 8 cores inside of it. And then also we have the 12 core M2 Pro. Again, very similar single core because obviously it's made out of the same ones, but obviously the multi core performance was 14,160. It was very impressive. But then what we have next is the 16 core Atom Man. Obviously there is 22 threads in total, but there's only 16 cores inside of this. And obviously quite a lot of them are efficiency cores. But you can see here, even for single core performance, it's just behind, it's not too far behind here. But obviously multi-core performance, it's definitely faster than the M2 Mac Mini, but it's just a little bit behind there than the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And then moving over to Cinebench, this is where things get quite interesting, but obviously Cinebench hasn't been still fully optimized optimized for Mac yet, but obviously you can see the differences here that the A-Core M2 Mac Mini obviously comes with a 1,592, um, single core 8,558 and multi-core, and then obviously a very similar single core for the M2 Pro, and then obviously that's 14,821 what we got in multi-core performance there for the M2 Pro Mac Mini, but obviously with the Intel Ultra 9, what we actually got there there was 1,849 in single core performance, that's faster, and the multi-core performance was even better, 16,755, what is super impressive. But next of all, let's move on to games then, and let's see how well games actually fared up on this machine compared to, say, other games that have been running on the Mac Mini M2 and also the M2 Pro. So I've got Cyberpunk here running at a benchmark here, 1080p, all low settings and everything, and let's see then what the speed comparisons have we've got right here. So obviously the Ataman here, obviously, with GTA 5, gave us 123 frames per second with this, was super impressive at 1080 Cyberpunk 2077, 42 frames per second. Horizon Zero Dawn gave us 48 frames per second. And Rise of the Tomb Raider, 63 frames per second. But moving over then to the M2 Mac Mini and using crossover on three of the four games here, GTA 5 did 55 frames per second. Cyberpunk 2077 was 31. Horizon Zero Dawn, 27 frames per second. So these Three games, they're playable, I'd say that. But then Rise of the Tomb Raider, obviously the native Mac version, this is where it's been optimized for it. This gave us actually 87 frames per second here. And just in case you wanted to know, 
for the actual 12 core M2 Pro Mac Mini. GTA 5 gave us 63 frames per second on crossover, Cyberpunk 2739, 37 on Horizon Zero Dawn. So again, very, very playable on here. Not the best in sort of gaming performance, but yeah, still playable. And then obviously the native Mac version of Rise of the Tomb Raiders gave us a full 125 frames per second was definitely playable. But overall, with a huge amount of RAM dedicated to this machine was 32 gigabytes. Like I said, you can upgrade this to 96 gigabytes of RAM, which is super impressive when you think about it for this machine. I think that is absolutely amazing. And at the moment, obviously, just with 32 gigabytes of RAM inside of it, you can dedicate 8 gigabytes. Maybe you can dedicate more if you added more RAM. I haven't actually messed around there, but still, it's very, very impressive for what this is. And to be deadly honest, what I'd say is Ataman, made by Minis Forum, is probably one of the best mini PCs out there, especially with these extra functions and things like that. I am very, very impressed with this small factor PC. And if you want to check out the small factor PC by Mini Forums, the Ataman, do check out all the details that are in the links below of the description of this video because obviously I'll be showing all the details about it there but there we go guys what are your thoughts then on the Atom Man what do you think of it do you think it's a good machine a bit of a gimmick or what let me know your thoughts in the comments below and also guys if you want to hear the latest technology news reviews and comparisons like we've done today make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell too until next time guys I'll see you really soon take care bye bye